Hey man. Oh. Yeah. Is this the iPhone 12 mini? The 12 mini? What are you talking about? This is the new iPhone 13 mini. You sure? Of course I'm sure. I'm looking at it. It's like a totally different new phone. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. I'm telling you. How so? Well, isn't it obvious? So for the longest of time, I was considering the Mini a small phone among a lineup of regular sized devices. It was all Mini words and small form factor cliches, but with the 12 Mini and now especially the 13, I consider all other phones abnormal. This Mini is the old and forgotten nostalgic new norm for me. Ever since the release of the 12 Mini, I got bedazzled by the magic of this device, but I have to be honest, when I ordered the 13 mini, I was long past the initial excitement of the keynote announcement. When it arrived, I was even less excited because when I opened the even more environmentally friendly package, there was really nothing new, except for the Picasso placement of the lenses. Same color, same size and almost the same weight. There was no initial wow factor to spark a hint of excitement. So after a hectic day, I just put the 13 mini in my pocket and moved on. To my surprise, I even didn't notice the small yet a bit taller notch until hours later. I went to bed as usual and that was that. The next day, however, oh, let me tell you, the next day was when I got shocked at what this little guy has morphed into. First thing that I noticed were the significantly stronger MagSafe magnets on the back. As someone who uses MagSafe wallet daily, I tend to utilize this clever magnetic solution system everywhere. The change in strength is really noticeable. I now have to put significant effort when detaching my wallet, giving me a strong, secure satisfaction feeling while also providing immense joy of the snap force upon reattachment. The vertical alignment strip is also improved because everything stays in place secure and even the MagSafe battery is having a hard time moving left and right towards the bottom of the phone. Note that I'm using old accessories with the exception of the new Pitaka Armit fiber case which is just awesome but everything else like my wallet, uh, my home and studio chargers, car holder is constant so I do notice the difference between the 12 and the 13. The next thing that caught my attention was the notch area, but not so much the smaller notch, but rather the more real estate around it, and especially the larger clock and status icons on the right. See, the iOS interface is perhaps the most balanced UI out there, and as such, when it comes to uniformity, it was only lacking on the mini, and specifically only in that 10% portion of the screen. With the larger previous notch on the 12 mini, everything seemed more cramped uh, in the corners, lacking some white space around it. The 13 mini however balances that act perfectly, eliminating absolutely all imperfections of element sizing, breathing aesthetically so to speak. It does make a difference to me and maybe because I'm a designer I'm not sure but once you start getting used to the mini this inconsistency in the notch area on the old device was the only thing reminding me of the fact that I'm using a smaller iPhone. Now balance is restored. Next up was the battery and I noticed this around noon. Keep in mind that I usually wake up around 7.30 a.m. Noon or around 1300 hours as the military call it was usually the time that made me glance at my 12 mini as a reminder that I might need to do a regular top-up session. Just to compare, I looked over to my friend's 12 Pro iPhone, he's sitting right there, which had similar skin on time and about 10% more juice. I was stunned at the results given the fact that the 12 mini would be around 40% or less after such use. Of course, those numbers vary each day, but the improvement is noticeable. And I don't think it lies solely on the 250 mAh of extra battery capacity that Apple crammed into this small body. The A15 Bionic chip is really shining as well as a more efficient 5 nanometer technology, resulting in a product that is now safe, 
to recommend to anyone. It is safe to say that the 13 mini can now easily be called a one day battery phone and this was the 12 mini's biggest problem. By the way, if you're using an iPhone and you're still concerned about the battery life of the 13 mini, go to your screen time settings and check out your last week's battery consumption. If you're averaging four, four and a half, five hour screen on time, then you should be just fine rocking the mini. If you're a gamer or serious streamer or content consumer, you and you normally go about six hours of screen on time, then the mini might not be your best fit. Although you can still rock it with an external battery for the occasional peak of consumption. And that brings me to the MagSafe battery that Apple sells separately. Despite many reviews out there, I see this accessory as the best companion for the people who don't want to be slaves of the big phones, ripping the jeans pockets and all. For 99 bucks on top of the reasonably priced mini, this accessory serves as a great purpose for the times when the battery is essential. I keep mine at my nightstand and I use it as a standard MagSafe charger and grab it only whenever I know I might have a more stressful day with less chances to top up my phone. The MagSafe battery is made for the mini if you ask me and with it you'll get probably 10 hours of screen on time or even more depending on the use case. Also, if you're about to purchase a MagSafe puck, which is around 30 or 40 bucks, an extra 50 bucks is worth the upgrade for the MagSafe battery. Anyway, in the midst of my iPhone 13 mini day, I was working on an iPad 12.9 inch M1 review, the iPad with the mini LED XDR display that is able to reproduce full HDR content. As I was finalizing my thoughts on it, I realized that the iPad's biggest selling point was the display itself. So silly me, I decided to shoot the entire video on the 13 mini in 4K Dolby Vision HDR with some here and there help of the 12 mini. Now I say silly me because working with HDR content is a totally different workflow, but I was determined because this way I could really test and see what this new iPhone cameras are capable of. In fact, we also use the cinematic mode for the talking head portion of that review video. The end result is not perfect, but it's more so my fault for not having experience with HDR rather than the mini not being capable enough. In fact, the footage is so beautiful and vibrant that it took me a while to recalibrate myself to SDR. I'll put a link to this video below and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Anyway, the new camera system on the mini is fabulous. I really don't like the positioning of the lenses this time around, but I'm willing to swallow it because in this case, function before form makes difference. Unlike prior years, the difference is not something that you'd have to pixel peep to see too. When it comes to photos, the wide camera is so great that it made me question my recent Sony ZV-1 purchase and I'll put side by side photos, one taken with the 12 mini, one with the Sony ZV-1 and one with 13 mini so that you can be the judge. Do you know which one is which? It's fascinating how such a small device can throw a big punch when it comes to camera capabilities. Even the photographic styles are something that I appreciate a lot, since I always like to manually retouch my most precious photos to make them a bit less warm and cleaner. The photographic styles are a welcome feature that I enjoy a lot because it saves me time. By the way, when I was doing the transition between the 12 mini and the new 13, I used today's video sponsor iMazing to do a local backup of my soon to be replaced device. iMazing is a desktop app for Mac OS and Windows users, which opens Apple's black box and lets me take full control of my iPhone. What I use most often is the photo library browser feature, which doesn't require for me to sync my photos with my Mac. The photo section provides detailed information about each shot and it allows me to see the different versions of my photos, like the non-portrait version of a portrait shot or the ultra wides and the originals of edited ones. iMazing also came in very handy when we were doing the HDR iPad video because we had to dump multiple videos from two devices and with the media type uh, browser, it couldn't be simpler. iMazing is a great and powerful tool that can easily transfer documents, media and content, but also dig into system files, access devices and battery diagnostics and lots more. Be sure to click on the first link in the description below to check out iMazing. So by that time, you might be waiting for me to tell you the downsides of the 13 mini and everything wrong with it, right? How this phone is too small for people with bad vision or how 
it can drain the battery when it comes to competitive games or how the notch protrudes when watching videos or how the screen is too small to use for watching movies. Well, that might be true, but none of those potential flaws apply because this is not the purpose of the 13 mini. Here's how I see the mini. The mini is a phone for busy people. I've touched base on this topic before, but in a nutshell, it is this. The mini is easy to hold, easy to put in a pocket, bag or purse, and easy to work one-handed. In a time when most of us are locked to our tech, the mini is a breath fresh air. You can easily use it to swipe reply to an email or a message while waiting in line or carrying groceries. It doesn't put any strain on your pinky or fatigue your arm that tries to keep it on your ear while having a long conversation. It's an unpretentious device that does everything else the other flagships do, but with a note of finesse and freedom and at a much lower price. To those that might say that the Mini is not good for people who don't have great vision, I'd say that they're wrong because it scales up to insanity. But for people that have mobility health problems, most other phones would not be able to scale down in their physical size to easily hold and operate with one hand. I'm referring to the many speculations and opinions from people saying that the iPhone 13 mini is not for everyone because of its size. I don't agree with such statements because from all the iPhones out there, I see the mini fitting almost everyone, especially considering the fact that it's the cheapest from the 13 lineup. Also, there's a psychology factor that I call the meh factor, where a phone that costs almost twice as less as some flagships out there makes you less of a slave to an expensive piece of tech, if you know what I mean. The 13 mini is a meh phone that is reasonably priced, easy to hold, and you wouldn't kill yourself if you break it by accident. And I say this from an experience, unlike the Pro Max model from last year, which I had, I'm a lot less concerned about the Mini, firstly because it's a joy to hold, but also because it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. About a month ago, I dropped my 12 Mini from about six feet on tiles, and although it dented the side rail, I was like, meh. See what I mean? At the same time, this meh phone is probably the most powerful compact phone on the market, and also it is not purposefully budget built. In fact, I'd say that the 13 mini has no compromises unlike its predecessor. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that this is the best phone out there, period. In fact, before I put the period, I just want to point you to my iPhone playlist in case you find this video useful. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to list them in the comment section below or ping me on Twitter. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out. Here we go.